Hey, what is up everybody? I just scored the snowblower for free from a tiny little issue that was such an easy fix and I thought, hey, I'll just share what I found with this snowblower. Hopefully it helps somebody out here. Let's get to it. All right, I scored the snowblower for free, like I said, from a neighbor who said he took it to an actual small engine mechanic who could not get it running. And uh, I got all the paperwork with it and everything and I got this thing running after about five minutes. And I told my neighbor, how would I just fix it and give it back to you as a favor? And he said, no, no, I'm a man of my word. If you can fix it, you can keep it. Well, I got it running. Anyways, so the symptoms of what was going on with this is that it did not matter if you had it in choke, half choke, choke was off, it didn't matter. Uh, once you got it running, and it would start, uh, it would run for about 10 to 30 seconds. Once that was done, the thing would run rich and it would stall out. And then you'd have to wait about 10 to 15 minutes. And then you could start it again. It would run for 10 to 30 seconds. It would run rich and it would stall out. So go ahead and leave a comment below of what you think the problem is before you continue with the video. All right, guys, what I ended up having to do, this is just a Toro power clean four, four cycle engine, 5.5 horsepower. I ended up um, having to just take the cover off to get to the carburetor. And on this model, uh, the carburetor is here behind this metal box. Um, kind of a pain in the butt to get to. I wish it was just more accessible. That's why I like Honda stuff. But anyways, I digress. The issue ended up being um, just a problem between the, um, the float needle and the seat. In this particular carburetor, the seat is a, one of those rubber O-rings and it had a split in it. So as the uh, carburetor was calling for, as the engine was calling for more gas, the carburetor bowl was filling and the float lifted up and the needle went up into the seat and it was not creating a perfect uh, seal. So the gas just kept flooding in and then it would run up the main jet in liquid form instead of a vapor form or a, a mist. And it would start running um, into the throat of the carburetor and it ran towards the engine and flooded it out every time. So that's why we'd have to wait about, you know, 10 to 15 minutes to be able to start it again. Well, some of that gas ended up leaking down into the oil into the crankcase too. So make sure you change your engine oil if you have this same problem. Change the engine oil and you're going to have to replace that seat or the float needle depending on um, what type of carburetor you have. And I'll All right, guys, once you get a carburetor taken off, uh, it's going to look something like this, relatively speaking. Um, you're going to take the main uh, screw out, out of the bottom here, remove the bowl. After you drain everything, of course, um, the drain screw is here, so make sure you shut off the fuel that is going to um, the carburetor. There should be a little fuel valve, a fat cock, anything like that, inline fuel valve. Shut that off so that no more gas gets to the carburetor. Once that's done, unscrew this, drain it out into a jar, pour it back into the gas tank, then put that screw back in, unscrew this one here from the bottom, and you can see that we have a float here. And the float, when the gas goes up, this is hollow, the float is hollow, so when the gas fills up the bowl, it pushes up on this float. And if you look here in the back, um, there's a needle there that pushes up into that brass seat there. So as the float rises, that needle pushes up. Now that needle can be made of metal. It can have a metal tip or it can have a rubber tip. So we got a metal tipped one here and we got a rubber tipped one here. If it's a metal tipped one, it'll go up into a rubber seat. If it's a rubber tipped needle, it'll go up into a metal seat. Sometimes this tip will get deformed if it's rubber, and sometimes the rubber seat will get deformed um, or it will split, get dry rot, crack, anything like that. So just make sure to swap out your float needle or seat depending on which one it is. You could Now the problem might not necessarily be that you have a split O-ring or a deformed rubber tip or a deformed O-ring or anything like that. It could just be that you have a piece of debris in there. Um, or it could be that you have um, left gas in there for far too long and it's turned to varnish and it's created like a little film on there and you're not getting a perfect bond between the, the float needle and the actual seat. So go ahead and use a little carb cleaner with a Q-tip, clean that up. You should be back in business. All right, guys, I hope this helped you out. If you happen to have the same problem where it's stalling after about uh, 10 to 30 seconds and it won't start again for about 15 minutes and it starts up and it stalls again. So make sure to check the bond between the float needle and the seat and hopefully you'll be back in business. If this helped you out, feel free to give me a like and a subscribe. I appreciate your view. Take it easy, guys.